Christ when we talk about only uh, in the session. Now, having understood this, now we need also to understand the nature of God. How does God answer our prayers? Does God say yes, no, or wait? Because this is one of the problems in churches today. We have been taught a lot that God answers in three ways. He says yes, second answer, wait, third answer, no. And I say this, that is their God, not my God. Hallelujah. Not my God. Listen to my God. Hallelujah. We say that he promised Abraham you will have a son. Right? There was no conversation. Wait. So if God has promised you something and then you have are, you are prayed for this and you have even reminded him and he, it has taken five years, it does not mean God say, wait. Because the Bible says, the, the scripture records, God's appointed time is always the best. There is time for everything. So that does not mean that he said wait. It's not about waiting. He, he has never said wait. Because God is not limited with time for you to tell you, I'm waiting some seasons. He's beyond time. God is timeless. Hallelujah. God is timeless. So it, it is not time that determines what he's going to do for you. Hallelujah. So God, God's hand is different. Let us read Matthew chapter 7. Let us read Matthew chapter 7 and see what Jesus is telling us about God. So whenever you fail to understand the character of Christ, you misrepresent Christ even in the preaching or in the teaching. Hallelujah. So we need to understand the character of Christ and when you understand the character, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he does not change. So God, if, if, if he does not change, then that is the character of God as it shall be explained to us. Hallelujah. Praise King Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse Let's begin from verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Verse 9. Or what man is there among you, who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? So Jesus is asking, which kind of a parent? Hallelujah. Listen to this. Number one, I told you, when you see him say, seek and you will find. You, you need to understand, it's not, this is not a type of prayer. Hallelujah. When you go back to chapter 6, verse 33, you realize he's saying, seek first the kingdom. So here he's communicating about seeking what? The kingdom. And why is he saying, seek first the kingdom? Because Christ himself is not yet gone to the cross. Hallelujah. So when he's not yet gone to the cross, he has not finished the work of the cross. So it is still the legalism taking a, a full control in humanity. Legalism and dead work do for you to achieve. Hallelujah. A fast for God to honor you. Fast to please God. But now after going to the cross, now I'm not fasting to please God. I'm fasting because God is already pleased in me. Hallelujah. I'm praying not to seek God, but I'm praying to have fellowship with the God who liveth in me. Are you getting it? So right now, eh, after Jesus has gone to the cross, it is not about we seeking the kingdom. Because the kingdom is Christ and he has sealed the kingdom by means of the cross. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. So verse, 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 next verse, that is verse 9. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? So what is telling us is this. Even if human beings give exactly what their children need, what about God? What about God? God will also do the same. Hallelujah. 
Why don't you to today? Uh, uh, so that you can understand more. Um, verse 10. Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11. What Jesus is explaining here is this. What you pray for is what you do at. Is what you receive. So what does he explain deeper? When he says, if you ask for fish, he won't give you the snake. If you ask for bread, he won't give you a stone. Uh, for, for bread, he won't give you a stone. What is he telling you? That I will give you what you what you ask. So what he's telling us here is that my answer is always yes. Hallelujah. My answer is always yes. But you must know how yes. You must know how yes. Next verse, verse 11. If you then being evil, now he's telling, if you human beings you are evil. As evil as you are, I, I don't know how somebody can read this and then still stand at the altar to say, God answers in three ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and then is that right? No. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know. If you then be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? He, him being more righteous, holy, loving, full of kindness. If we parents our duniani too, we know how to give just in that status and nature of evil to us. We know how to give good things that our children ask. What about the Father when we ask of Him? Will He give us what we don't pray for? He says no. What about your Father? Meaning, He will give you even more than what you have prayed for. Even more than what you have done what? Prayed for. So His answer is not yes, wait, no. That's another God. His answer is yes. Hallelujah. But how yes? Because some people have prayed and they have not seen that yes. So there's a problem. And that's why they go quickly to justify themselves and say, no, you know what? He told me to wait. No. Nothing like that. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, if you are there, from verse 13. Listen to this. The Bible records, and whatever you ask in my... So, whenever we pray, we must know the meaning of the word in my name. So, it does not mean paper talker in Jesus' name. No, that, that, it doesn't mean like that. That is not what it explains. Let me explain this. Jesus says, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Meaning the other will be, yes, what, but whatever you ask where, in whose name? In my name, that I will do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Listen to that. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What is the message there? So Jesus is saying, when you pray, pray in my nature and my character. And then everything you ask, you will receive. Look at the sons of Sceva. They started to pray and to cast out demons in the name of Jesus who is being preached by Paul. They say, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is being preached by Paul? We cast you out, demon. Did the demon go? Instead, they received, the Bible says, they received such a beating that they went naked. That's what the Bible records, the book of Acts. Why? Because, but you see, they misunderstood that praying is saying in Jesus' name. No. You can cast out a demon without even saying in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just say, come out and it leaves. Hallelujah. Come out. I command the disease to come out right now. And it leaves. Why? Because the word in Jesus' name means in the regalia of Christ. Romans 
says, clothe yourselves with Christ Jesus. So when I have clothed Jesus, it means that it is not me living, it is Christ living. So what I speak, it is not me speaking, it is Christ speaking. That's what it means by praying in his name. So you cannot, and when you are praying in his name, it means you are praying in the nature of Christ, you are praying in the character of Christ, you are praying in the will of Christ. And you cannot pray in the will of Christ and he says wait. Because it means what you are speaking, it is not you speaking, it is Christ speaking. Praise King Jesus. It is not you speaking, it is Christ speaking. So we need to understand this. So that we don't perish and languish in ignorance just because we did not know the nature of Christ. Hallelujah. So how many people have been blaming God? God doesn't answer my prayers. Maybe he said, wait. Maybe he said, no. No, ah, that is not God. This is what he says. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do it. Hallelujah. So I, you can come here and pray from morning to evening without saying in Jesus' name and things will happen. Hallelujah. You can tell me, Pastor, pray for me. I have, I'm going to Mombasa. And then I, I say, I declare safety as you go and as you come back right now. Receive your, 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 your safety, your safe journey right now. Peace be with you. Bye bye. And then it shall be like that because I spoke those words in the nature and the character of Christ. Are we together? It's not about saying, eh, Catch fire in Jesus' name. Catch fire in Jesus. No, it's not saying in Jesus' name. Uh, no. The word in Jesus' name means in the character of Christ, the nature of Christ. Meaning that, you know, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? Who is faith when we read Galatians? Christ is our faith, right? So what the Bible is explaining is that without Christ, it is impossible to please God. God. That's why Jesus says, no one can go to the Father except through me. So I can say, no one can go to the Father except through faith. Which faith? Christ Jesus. So when I'm praying through Christ Jesus in Jesus' name, it is not just named by mentioning Jesus Christ, but the character. Hallelujah. Your son automatically carries your DNA. Right? Automatically carries your DNA. So when he comes, he is not necessary, he will call you daddy. No. He can even bring you a letter from the teacher, Jisome. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then you read and you respond. Is it under or not? Should, should, should the child come and say, Hey, daddy, 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 katika jina, katika jina, la, la, la danito, maluki, baba, yangu, na mpela. No! He's my dad. Whether I call him daddy or not, he's my dad. Hallelujah. Well, uh, he, he, in fact, he can even come crying. Weo mwizu na liya lini, ni kala mzina. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you need to understand the relationship between you and your father. I told you in the, the whole of New Testament, you will not see the names people are using today when they sing, even the songs. Jehovah Mekadishkem, Jehovah Rafa, Jehovah Tikenu, Jehovah Elolam, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah, uh, all those names. You don't find them in the New Testament. Only one name. Which name? Father. Jesus never called God all of these names people. No, he called him Father. Because he if God comes to build a family so that we address him as daddy. Hallelujah. Are we together? So, you need to understand that he answers our prayers and his answer is always positive. Only. So, why is it that some people pray and they think he said wait? Why is it that some people pray and they come with a no answer? They did not pray in the character of Christ, in the nature of Christ, they lack the regalia, so they are like strangers before the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we read 2 Corinthians?
chapter 1 verse 20 chapter 1 verse 20 Bible records for all the promises of God in him are yes <laughs> hallelujah they are yes and in him are men in him meaning in what in Christ Jesus they are yes and amen that's how he, that's how he responds to our prayers that's how he, he responds to our promises in Christ Jesus That's why he says, when you read Luke 18, nothing is impossible with you. Maybe we shall read. But listen to this. They are yes and amen. Ah, let me begin from verse 19, right? Verse 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> you know, you need to understand. You know, people have mis- Hey, brother, people don't know God. They don't know God, though. Hallelujah. <laughs> not yes and no. It is what? Yes. yes. Yeah, he's tracing. So I today, can I put some names there? Let, let, let me suspend some names here right now. Jesus in a back Jesus, nobody can deal with that. Mahali for Silvana is like a chairman. Mahali for Timo is like a pastor Gustin. Hallelujah. Let's try this. And now to keep you try yourself. Hallelujah. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us all, Christ forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> was preached by Christ Fever, by me, Pastor Chunge, Chairman, and Pastor Gastin, was not yes and no, but in him, yes. And then now, next verse, his promises are yes and amen. Amen means in agreement. When you are praying in the will of God, you are in agreement with God Himself. That's why when he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It means without Christ, it is impossible to please God. That's why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can go to the Father except through me. Because without me, you cannot access the Father. Because how will you please him? Hallelujah. So it is yes. That is God. That's your God, though. Are we together, Catherine? That's your God. That's your Father. That is the God. People have been sent to explore the land, to check and see how it is. And then the, the fear enters them. First John chapter 4, from verse 18. Fear has to do with punishment. So, where there is fear, the faith, listen to this, the, the opposite of faith is fear. Fear is the satanic faith. Because fear means trusting in what? Trusting in what? In negative results, impossibilities, fear. But those who said no, God will still give us what was the answer of God because they were in his will. Yes and amen. They took the land. They possessed Caleb and the team. Hallelujah. So his answer is yes. Amen. Now some of you, today you have understood why every time you pray, you finish with amen. <laughs> in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name means in your character, in your will. The nature of answering prayers and the character of righteousness and holiness, because that is our regarding, we have prayed in that argument. So, amen also means argument in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, don't just say amen when somebody is preaching things you don't, you, you know they are wrong. Hallelujah. 
Bibelekevu. Do not they bewitch Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. No, 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 no. Because this is an argument that I concur. And so you need to understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you agree with me, and you see now how the revelation knowledge is being impacted in you, you need to say that amen as if it's a microphone you are given. Amen! But not an empty amen. Amen with possession of the character. Hallelujah. Did I tell you to fear saying amen? I only say that you should be cautious enough to understand the regalia of the message being spoken so that you don't possess what you should not be possessing. Hallelujah. That is Christ. Yes and Amen. Once you understand this, you don't have a problem. Prayer, you don't struggle with prayers. People struggle with prayers. Why? Because they are not in the character of Christ. They are not in the nature of Christ. So they try to pray. Because when you see you are struggling even to pray, you don't have Christ. Hallelujah. Because Christ doesn't struggle. Are we together? He doesn't strain in prayer. When you are fully packaged with the power, with the Holy Ghost, with Christ, you have the breakthrough in everything you do. In everything. Because that is the nature. That is you. That is you. And then everything will be okay. So that when we, we come to, to learn all these other things that we need to learn about, as we, we progress in this knowledge, you are in that character. Now, so if you come here, for example, we have given you time to, to lead prayer service. We can also call it supplication prayer, I'm a supplication program, where we pray in the morning every Sunday and also weekly, day, weekly, well, daily, on daily basis, weekdays like today. You know, before service, we, we begin by praying. And then you say, hey, brothers, brothers, can we open the book of Psalms? Psalms, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want us to pray with fire. I want us to pray with fire. Psalms 35. Plead my cause, O oh Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. I want us to pray that prayer. I want God to fight our enemies. I've just read because I was opening. I'm not imagining so you can read it. It is Psalm 35. Uh, when you continue to say, Makwe kama makapi mbele angu. Nina pokita makwe kama makapi. So you want to pray. When, when, when my enemies come, may God, may God kill them. I want us to pray that prayer. Enter into the spirituals and start praying so that God can deal with those enemies thoroughly. It won't be under. That is not the character of God. You are a witch. It's only that a witch is in the church praying. Hallelujah. A witch is in the church praying. That is the only difference. That is not God. Hallelujah. That is not God. So you need to understand how does God deal with such issues. Hallelujah. I was somewhere sometimes, I think last year, and somebody, one pastor was leading us to pray that prayer. And uh, I just found myself now what if one number on the street? Watch our buffet. Watch our tanga tangi. Watch our kateka. Hey, one number na 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 po wanga li na na uhu ya onge onge na uju. Na one number ma adu a buffet. Na uju. Eh? God is not in business of answering such prayers. So he will not say no. He is not part of the prayer. So don't say he said no. Such a prayer cannot reach him. Hallelujah. Are we together? <laughs> not that you are a sinner, but you are not praying in the character. So don't go and read Isaiah 59. You know God does not hear the prayer of sinners. Tax collector was a sinner. Right? He was justified. The one who thought he was holy was not justified. Hallelujah. Prayers under or not. 
Because the prayer is always yes or amen. He said, it is our Araka. Again. They pray. No, please. Allow us to enter the swines. And he immediately enter them. Yes and amen. Like in the Nayako. Nataka ima people was kumi. Ya enda yenge katika yu nyumba. Na ya anze kuwa mtoto kwanza. Mpaka wa mwisho. It will not happen my friend. The Bible says our God is merciful. And our nye mpua wenye dhambi na wenye. He provides to all. Hallelujah. He provides to all. That is our God. That is our God. When it is present. I want us to finish with this, just to show you more about the about the character of God, about the character of God, so that when we pray, at least we don't um, uh, we don't 